Welcome to All Things Moore County, Moore County's weekly radio show, highlighting the many facets of the Sand Hills. That includes real estate, lifestyles, community and neighborhood. And now, from Four Properties, here's your host, Bill Sahadi. Good morning. Welcome to the talk show, All Things Moore County. Um, Dorothy, we, um, we finally had some great rains this week. Uh, oh, yes, we did. Much needed. And... Uh, at this juncture in spring, mm-hmm. you know, we're in the growing season. Yep. Um, s- everything is blooming. Spring is, is you know, uh, a statement about new beginnings. Um, and today we're going to be talking about, uh, with the spring weather um, and the growing season, um, we're going to be talking about um, the new farmer's market at the health department. We're going to be talking later in the show with Kathy O'Donnell, um, who is going to and talk a lot about healthy foods, healthy eating, uh, nutritional tips for people um, for many reasons. But we um, are going to start talking this morning um, with Rich Tompkins, uh, Dave Manis, who's a local farmer. Rich is the um, health education coordinator um, at the health department. And Lauren Rakes, uh, who is a supervisor of the Woman, Infant, and Children Division for um, people who... Uh, actually qualify for vouchers, Lauren. Um, uh, let's start with um, the big topic. The health department is um, sponsoring a farmer's market starting May the 1st. Rich, is that, um, this yeah, is a we're kickoff? we start it on May 1st and uh, continue on every Monday uh-huh. through August. Uh-huh. Um, we're doing that mainly. The other markets are other days during the week Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, right, uh, and we wanted to give the farmers a chance and the public a chance to, uh, you know, be able to purchase produce up in the northern part of the county on Mondays. We um, we've had lots of different shows um, over the years. Um, the northern part of the county and the southern part of the county are sometimes considered two different worlds um, in Moore County. You want to speak to that a little bit? I think that was one of the prime motivations of of doing the market at the health department uh, because we do see all of the current markets being held in the southern part of the county in southern pines and pinehurst and uh, it seems like those of us in the northern part of the county now of course people in high falls and robins wouldn't necessarily consider carthage the north part of the county but really it is kind of the line between north and south and we're hoping to really draw a lot of the people from the north and part of the county to come to Carthage on Monday to u- utilize the market because it's a lot closer than, say, Southern Pines and Pinehurst. And where exactly is the um, farmer's market going to be held at the health department? It's going to be either in the parking lot somewhere at the health department, uh, hopefully between the Cooperative Extension Building and the health department. We'd like to put it on some grass because as it gets into the summer, if we have it on the on the parking lot, it would uh, kind of get pretty hot. So we're hoping to be utilize the grassy areas and uh, have it there. Lauren, um, Rich mentioned um, the farmer's markets that are very <coughs> prevalent in the southern part of the county in Southern Pines and Pinehurst. We see them all the time off Morganton Road in the downtown park in Southern Pines in Pinehurst. Um, But but there really hasn't been a presence um, north of Carthage to this point. And that's also um, an area that needs healthy foods um, and needs an ability to provide that type of produce to to people in that area as well. Right. Tell me a little bit about, um, the. you're the WIC coordinator. Yes. Can we, you talk a little bit about that um, agency? I can. Um, we are with the, a lot of us know is the, just the WIC department. Yeah. Um, so we are a supplemental nutrition program. Um, we provide a lot of nutrition education and then the food voucher benefits to low-income families who qualify. Um, so those vouchers, we just bring healthy foods into these families' homes that might not be able to um, mm-hmm. bring them into their homes themselves. Um, so we just help out with them a little bit with that. And uh, let's see, we also have the Farmer's Market Nutrition Program that is linked with the WIC program, which is 
another reason why we were wanting to bring the farmers market to the WIC office um, so we could kind of coordinate um, WIC appointments with farmers market nutrition vouchers and they could just go directly out to the farmers market and use these vouchers and bring some more fresh fruits and vegetables into the homes um, of these families. There's not a day that goes by that I don't go on Facebook <laughs> and there are websites upon websites about healthy eating, links to um, good nutrition, good development, um, especially with children. Um, and as our population is getting older, um, people start to focus now more on um, good diet, um, maybe to right all the wrongs of the last 40 or 50 years. So they think they can make it up in just half a decade. But, but you read so much about the, the link between good nutrition and um, health and development. And part of, I guess, what you're doing is consistent with that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We try to start with the education when they're young, too, as far as with the WIC program. Um, we educate uh, it, children who qualify age, uh, from birth to age five, and then any women who are um, pregnant and then postpartum up until a year postpartum. We, um, they can come and get services from our WIC program and they would get nutrition education recipes. Um, so yeah, we try to start them when they're young and start with the families now right. so they can kind of translate into uh, the next generation. Yeah, so. Rich? Well, and one of the things we're going to be doing at the market is providing a lot of nutritional information uh, in any of the bags that people use to transport their vegetables and fruits and things, um, as well as recipes. Because a lot of times at farmers markets, you have vegetables that a lot of people don't normally pick out when mm -hmm. they go to the supermarket. That's right. So what we hope to do is provide healthy recipes, easy recipes, for people to use uh, when cooking the vegetables that we're providing. Right. Important. Um, it's almost like cross-marketing. It's you're, you're educating and you're also providing at the same time. Um, what about um, the costs of the produce um, in the farmers market, uh, aside from the vouchers, um, it's going to be competitive with, uh, or more competitive than grocery stores. Would David be able I, to answer that? I can't really speak to okay. the exact price of all, all of the fruits and vegetables. Um, I think whenever they're locally produced and they're as fresh as they are, and not mass produced, they're probably going to be a little more expensive. But I think overall, when you weigh the nutritional value and supporting our local farmers, um, I think it's well worth the, the trip to a local market versus the supermarket. Let's, can we talk a little bit about the local farmers? Um, because it's, a, it's something you're doing in concert with the local farmers here in Moore County, um, where they get a chance to supply their wares. Well, uh, Lauren and I have talked about this quite often. Um, it has been so enlightening and encouraging when speaking to the farmers and meeting with them. We've met, them, met with them three times already at various meetings. And they're so upbeat, so positive, so encouraging. Um, I've been in education my whole life, and, you know, there's a lot of grousing about things in education. Right. But we walk away from these meetings with the farmers just just feeling so good right because they're just such good people right and they they have at times like with the recent cold weather and the frost there's so much that they could be angry about but we just never see that you brought uh, dave manis with you who is a local farmer and uh, dave um i think a lot uh, you know, I'm in the real estate business, and um, a lot of builders um, work very close to the vest. You know, it's it's sometimes difficult. They work on razor thin margins. Probably very similarly true of farmers as well. Yeah, yeah, it it really is a kind of a a gamble, I guess you could say. There's been uh, a lot of things have gone on this season, as far as weather-wise, so. But everybody's working real hard to try to try to maintain a good quota. I mean, we've had this cold weather has really impacted the the uh, 
blueberry, your peach crops coming in. Yeah. And, um, and you had a dry winter. And the dry winter is so far, yeah. So every year, you can you can plan perfectly, but you're always subject to the elements. Yeah, Mother Nature always has control. Right. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So, uh, so tell yeah, me about so, tell me about some of the local produce from Moore County farmers that people will see at the farmers market. Well, you'll be seeing uh, starting off May first. We'll have a pretty good variety. There'll be a uh, by May 1st, we'll have basically all your spring crops will be in full vigor as far as uh, your root crops, beets, radishes, uh, your greens, kale, which is a very great vegetable in this area. People really kale. utilize kale a lot. They sure do. That's a, on Facebook all the time. Kale recipes for this and for that. It's crazy. For sure. But, uh, and you'll also be having your transition of your early summer crops coming in as well. And then you mentioned peaches, blueberries, strawberries, obviously, right now. Strawberries are actually, strawberries are really early this year for... Yeah, for, why Why is that? I've noticed that, too. Uh, basically because of your, your warm... Okay. January, February. Yeah. And uh, because strawberries, when it got up to those days that we had 70 degrees, 80 degrees, that really set the strawberries on fire. That made them start wanting to bloom and produce berries. And Bill, I, I, I will be um, in touch with the farmers, Lauren and I, um, right up until the first market day and every market day after that. And we'll be posting on our Facebook page and uh, our web page the different um, vegetables, fruits, and other products we'll be having at each market. Uh, we also will put a mailing list together. We'll ask people to, for email addresses when they come to the market. So every Thursday or Friday, we'll push out an email message to people mm -hmm. telling them what's going to be at the market that mon that next Monday. And can they access your the, the Moore County website to get updates on the market? Is that what you're saying? Yes. That's where yes. the postings will and be? We'll have a connection to the Facebook page. We have a Moore County Farmer's Market Facebook page. Um, that we're, we're putting together it's it's not quite up yet and uh, but we'll hopefully have it up in the next week or so yeah in Moore County um, even in the educational system in the schools they have been efforts to um, e educate kids on nutrition on um, uh, doing their own uh, planting their own vegetables their own fruits uh, not to be so dependent on processed foods uh, fast foods um, so there's so many unhealthy choices out there that are quick and easy, but at the end of the day, they don't really uh, a big contributor to obesity, uh, plus the lack of physical education. It, all of it kind of like wraps into the same, you know, it's all intertwined. Here she goes making her face. I have, <laughs> Lauren, I have, a, I have a question. Yes. <laughs> you're, you're a very young lady. How... Um, did you get involved as a WIC supervisor? What was it about your education? What was it about your experience that got you to uh, a point where you are um, working with women, infant, and children? Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's a deep question. No. <laughs> well, I feel bad. I'm the old man since you're the young man. No, well, I mean, I, I, growing up, you, just, you see what the what obesity has done to us as a country and that's kind of what drew me into the field went to school for nutrition and then okay. um this is my hometown and you I grew mean, up in Moore County I did okay. I grew up in Moore County and I would at the time when I started applying for jobs and stuff I just wanted nothing more than to help with childhood <coughs> obesity specifically so originally that was my draw to the WIC program um was to try and make a difference with the children in the community to try and again like I was saying work towards that next generation coming in and maybe fighting this and putting an end to it you know um, but it's I, kind of a little I bit. bet that the more that you get involved in <clears throat> as supervisor and the more that you see the more committed you have become to, to what it is yeah. that you're doing yes absolutely right <laughs> yeah. Because you get to see the the results of um, you do. Um, we especially as you see kids come in, and you I mean we see them from birth to five. I mean I've seen I've been with them for three and a half years now. Yeah. Um, so 
and you see kids now that are three and a half years old. You right. Know? Um, so you get to watch them grow up, and you become kind of attached to them, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, but you can kind of see, like you said, the progress. And what kids learn at a young age about anything, uh, food included, c can stick with them as they get older. Mm -hmm. um, good habits or bad habits. Mm -hmm. um, so you have a chance to sort of right the ship a little bit. And, and we hope to maybe bring in the bring in the daycares, right. maybe some of the elementary schools while they're still in session, and maybe have them come to the market and do a little instructional mm -hmm. um, uh, instructional thing with the with mm -hmm. the elementary school kids. Mm -hmm. You know the the power of video uh, and social media has become so predominant. Um, I bet that on your kickoff on May first. If you had a video shot of the farmer's market and the people that come and you post it, it will have as much of an effect on drawing other people as either talking about it or writing about it. Mm -hmm. People are so visual. They look at these little two, three-minute snippets and they go, oh, you know, I want to be there. I want to go there. Um, get a video camera and go, go to town. We will have that. Yeah. Rich, you mentioned you um, you were an educator all your life. Yes. Um, can you give me a little bit about your background? What kind of um, were you a teacher? Uh, no, I was a, an administrator. Okay. Pretty much a, a uh, principal in a middle school. Okay. For roughly that 20, 25 that, years. That explains a lack of hair. <laughs> it explains a lot of things. <laughs> um, but I think um, you, you're right. It, if we can catch students at a younger age having to do with nutrition and right. letting them know it, it's it's not always about a convenience it's about health um, I think we can kind of plant that seed early on um, I also wanted to mention speaking of education that the future farmers of America the group in uh, Union Pines High School uh, will hopefully be helping us over the summer and volunteering at the market uh, doing different things that we might need them to do and to help out, right? which is uh, really nice of them to offer to do that. Right. Um, Dave, I have to get back to you. You've been a farmer your whole life. Has it been a family business? Uh, yeah, we've been a family-owned farm for, I'm the third generation, I guess you could say. Right. Uh, my, all our family used to farm one way or the other. Uh, big thing about our, our past is, is like many farm, many many family farms, they worked regular full time jobs and farmed the farm part time, basically to feed the family. But uh, with my generation, I'm trying to transition it into a a full time farming occupation kind of, and that's the way a lot of the farms that's going to be represented at the market this season are. They're they're got deep history right here in Moore County of. That's right. Being farm families, and they've always worked farm and and helped out their community. So you know we that's why that's why I, I guess Rich is talking about us being so upbeat and never down. Well, that's that's farming life. Just like for instance, this coming to do this, he said, I know you uh, all have very demanding schedules, but I I told him I said, well, give us a day and we'll. We'll work it out. That's the way farmers are. We, yeah, you know, we resilient from, from sun up to sundown. Jobs got to be done. You have family of your own? Not, uh, not personal family. Just oh. siblings, brother, sisters, oh, mother, okay. father. I was going to say, if you did, I was gonna, are your kids going to be coming up in the business as well, or perhaps maybe well, your nieces, nieces or nephews? Nieces and nephews, nieces and nephews. Yeah. Okay. They'll be. They are involved. I have a niece that just really loves the animal side of the farm. She usually spends every summer down taking care of the, the, the goats and the baby chickens and things of that nature. Well, the um, the initial kickoff is going to be Monday, May the 1st. Correct. And you are in the process now of getting the word out. And um, uh, social media can really be a big benefit to help get the word out because everybody is tuned into their internet on their computers and um, st st stuff like this can spread like wildfire mm -hmm. um, and I think the northern part of the county um, actually needs needs that focus as well so it's an it's a noble thing that you're doing um, and honestly um, we are now in full swing with spring here I think I, I think it's here I don't think we're gonna have any fallback um, I appreciate you guys coming in and talking with us. Um, the farmer's market at the health department starts on Monday, May the 1st. 
<coughs> and it will be to benefit all the local residents plus the women, infant, and children uh, with a special voucher program. We wish you the best of luck. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you, Thank guys. You. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Hey, welcome back to our second set of All Things Moore County. Um, Dorothy, um, the May 1st farmer's market that's going to start, mm -hmm. um, I, I just want to mention a couple of the farms that are going to be there since there was so much emphasis on the local um, feel to it. Okay. Um, Eagles Nestberry Farm, um, Priest Family Farms, the Highlander Farm, Happy Trails, Chris Umland, um, Paradox Farm, Sue Stovall, who's been a past guest on the show. Yeah. Um, she is now, I guess, full-time working at the farm and um, uh, walked away from her PT. Hmm. Uh, yeah. And, of course, David Manis, uh, the three M's, uh, Boar Goat Farm. They're all going to be there on May 1st in northern Moore County. Cool. And yeah, and they're going to have a ton of stuff um, seasonal: strawberries, watermelons, cantaloupes, the tomatoes, bell peppers, asparagus, radishes, mustard greens, garlic. I sound like a cook, but yes, I'm not. You do. Onions, <laughs> kale, <laughs> Ooh, lettuce, Swiss chard, tomato plants, uh, basil, and a whole host of cheeses, pork, eggs, and possibly. Uh, some flowers. I mean, it's going to be a nice oh, way cool. to st yeah to kick it off, and then they'll um, they'll get back to us as things progress. Very so good. part of what we talked about um, with Rich and um, Lauren um, was the farmers market, but the undertone of the conversation was all about healthy eating and um, the vouchers for the underprivileged mm -hmm. kids. We talked a little bit about the obesity issues in our country, health issues in our country. Which we have plenty of. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, for the remainder of the show, we're going to be speaking with um, a very shy. Are you sure about that? Yeah, she's very shy, and we're going to hope that she can step out of her shell a little bit, and I'm talking about Kathy O'Donnell. Kathy has a very interesting background. Um, she was a consultant. She uh, worked um, as a consultant, as an organizational psychologist. Not that she was a psychologist, but in assessing behaviors. Um, and when it gets to food, um, there's a way to assess diets. There's a way to assess, uh, because there's a definite link between diet and health. Um, yeah, <laughs> I agree with that one. So, Kathy, I guess, uh, first I'll say good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. No, you. I don't want. I want you to be able to talk and project and not to worry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to have a problem at all. I'm going to leave now and let her just take over. Um, your background um, was organizational in nature um, and assessing people's behaviors. Mm -hmm. But in your in the second chapter in your in your book in your life, you kind of meandered into. Um, uh, food, cooking, uh, dieting, um, and you can probably draw a lot of parallels for us, uh, the relationship between health and, and, and good eating. 
and she's just going to sit here and she's actually just going to write notes while I talk <laughs> and hope that people can understand and read through the lines what she's saying. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, y- you, um, right now you're actually working um, at the um, Clara McLean House? Mm-hmm, that's correct. At the First Health. Um, it's a beautiful facility. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um but tell me a little bit about your background um, as it pertains to cooking and diet okay. and food. Um, so it is a second career for me or a second path for me. Um, as you mentioned, I was in consulting for various businesses um, and had a very busy lifestyle, but I always wanted and liked um, to eat healthy. Right. Um, but to give you an example, I could be getting up at 4 in the morning to be on a flight to Chicago. This was pre-9-11 when we didn't have long security lines. Right. Um, you know, run on my car, jump on a plane, go to Chicago, do a day of interviews, come home and get home at 10 o'clock at night. So I really had a very busy lifestyle, very deadline driven, get up the next day, do a training program and deliver it, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, during that time, I always loved food and was a foodie, um, so to speak. Um, And after being in the consulting world for a long time and having access to a lot of different businesses, I couldn't think of one that I wanted to go into. Um, And I just decided to leave and to start exploring and started to work in um, um, establishments, food establishments. And I started to, I lived up in Boston at the time, and I um, went to, I started at Johnson and Wales, and um, my sister was getting a postdoc there at Brown, and so we were actually living together. Uh And when I was at this, um, you know, at um, Johnson and Wales, I was like, the food that they're using is making people sick. And I didn't want to be a part of the problem, and we have a huge problem in this country. And um, I decided to make a shift, and I transferred to a place called the Natural Gourmet in New York City to become a natural food chef. And we had a lot of, several dietitians in my class, and it was a unique program. It was primarily based on whole foods, and they had different segments on seafood. And, um, you know, prior to all of this um, uh, focus on local, um, they were doing that and um, you know the grass fed beefs the high quality food things like that fermented foods all of that mm-hmm. there is um, how long have you lived in Moore County six years so would you agree there's a subculture here of wellness mm-hmm. um, absolutely right and yep. you know I mean you're you're very familiar with Sue Stovall yep. Paradox Farms yep. and we were talking earlier this morning um, th- there's a definite move on but in Moore County mm-hmm. we have it's like a tale of two counties, the northern portion and the southern portion. Um, and there's got to be a, um, a relationship between um, uh, income mm, and, di- huge, and diet. Yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I can't give you the statistics, but I can tell you that a strong interest of mine is working um, with physicians and um, uh, there was a, a, a great lady that I talked to. She's a cardiologist, and she's at Emory University. Um, and she uh, said at this point in her life, she's in her 70s, that one of her you know, biggest issue is working with populations that are mm-hmm. poor because they're the most significantly mm-hmm. impacted by this. And like I said, I don't know the statistics, but it's a huge problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The, yeah, the, the, um, the less people have, the more processed foods that they eat because they're more readily available right? and quicker. Yep. Um, we did a show, oh gosh, a couple of months ago about generational poverty. Mm-hmm. And um, it's amazing how um, people who have a culture of poverty have a whole different mindset about the goals that they have each day, mm-hmm. each week, each month. And eating is just to probably fill your stomach. Mm-hmm. The, the higher you go up on the income scale, you get to a point where you're not only eating better food, you're actually commenting on the presentation of the foods. Mm-hmm. There's a huge gap in between. Right. Um, how long were you in New York? You said you were a natural food chef. Oh, well, I actually went to school in um, okay. yeah, in New York City at the Natural Gourmet. So just six months. And have you... Um, how long have you been practicing as a, as a food chef? You know, um, I actually uh, probably about 
eight years now. Yeah. Yeah. And in, in different capacities. So, for example, after I, I graduated, I actually went to Italy um, to live for a year and a half, cool. um, which was fantastic because really whole foods and ingredients are the way the Italians operate and function. So it was very natural and synergistic. And I happen to love Italian food. I mean, I love Indian food. I love ethnic food. Um, but it is very synergistic the way that I cook and because it is for the Italians all about ingredients. So for example, if you go to a restaurant like Bobo in New York City, mm -hmm. um, you know, I had something, it was cubed um, squash raw with um, a fantastic olive oil poured over it and shaved Parmesan. You know, that's the kind of simplicity that people working with ingredients have. Mm -hmm. um, so that's sort of stylistically how I cook. And that's also, you know, transitions well into um, the name of my business, Real Foods and Fast Times, really giving yourself nurturing and delicious food. Simplistically, this is not, you know, you don't need a 17 in ingredient dish or, you know, three different kinds of vinegars. Um, you can really eat beautifully and well and yeah. healthfully. Yeah, you were talking, we spoke the other day on the phone um, at length and you were telling me about how you prepare Brussels sprouts versus where some of the chefs have this pressure to use 14 to 20 ingredients, uh, and you say, no, not really necessary. No. You know, and actually the recipe that I have was from Whole Foods. I've worked in a couple of Whole Foods in um, Charlottesville, Virginia, and then here in Chapel Hill. And um, it was super simple. We just, like, washed them, roasted them. I mean, obviously, you cut off the ends and you do and make a little X at the bottom. And the little X at the bottom is for uh, so it cooks more evenly. And then um, we roast them without anything on them. Uh -huh. And then what I like to do is just saute some leeks or something on the side. Um, or you can literally salt them and eat them. And they're quite good if they're roasted because they do get a little bit of a, a burn or a char. Yeah. Um, so the chances of us running into you at breakfast one morning on Highway 1... <laughs> Anywhere on the left or right hand side, that's probably not going to happen, is it? No, but but not for reasons that you would think. Okay. The reasons are because you know when you come from the north, you're used to those <laughs> Greek diners. Oh, and, love oh them. my god, love and, them. You know, I, I haven't ha found a breakfast, a southern breakfast like I found up north. Okay, so I have I have the best. I can tell you where the best Greek omelet is in all of Moore County. Okay. Seriously. Okay. Um, famous toastery. Oh, okay. Have you been there? I have once, yes. Have you had the you haven't No, had, I haven't had the Greek omelet. So the Greek omelet is to die for. It actually is loaded with spinach, not just like enough to make it look green. Yeah. Loaded with feta cheese. Uh -huh. And the it's wrapped almost like a um I don't know, it's it's just a it, it's a magnificent omelet and growing up in the north, right, Greek diners, we grew up on oh them. My God, yes. Can't match I love them, down them here. to this day. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I will treat you to a Greek omelet um, at Famous, to and you will go, oh my gosh, this is actually okay. what I remember. Okay. And we have to bring my son because I want to indoctrinate him into the kind of food, food and eating. <laughs> when you grow up in the north, um, eating it, it becomes an art form. Yes. But it's always casual. It's like your mother's grandmother's kitchen, right? Yep. Well, and I think there's so many like little neighborhoods and, and just, you know, the pierogi place or, um, you know, the bread place, um, you know, these sort of, um, they're so, it's so culturally connected right. um, to the it's, area. It's the food, it's the ambiance, it's the, it's the total experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here it's in the South, and I don't mean just here, but just in the South, it's just, there's, it's just food on a dish and you look around and it, Looks like an old Howard Johnson's, right? Do you remember? Do you remember those? Uh, in in some cat, because eating you just eat to fill your stomach, but up there it's it's a it's an experience. Yeah, we're going to come back in the third set. We have a lot to talk about. I want to talk to you about um, your work at the um, Clara McLean House. Mm -hmm. What you see with people who come in, whose family members are staying there, mm -hmm. who have sick uh, family members. Mm -hmm. Diet is one of the biggest reasons people get to a point of, mm -hmm. of poor health. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you're you doing a good job of coming out of your shell, by the way. Thank you. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> uh, this is All Things More Kenny. We'll be right back. In the middle of a
always something happening, and it's usually quiet. Welcome back to our uh, final set of All Things Moore County. Hey, you know, Dorothy, on the heels of um, the farmer's market mm -hmm. on Monday, May the 1st, that's opening, this conversation with Kathy is actually um, as important um, as the announcement of um, what they're doing up there because eating good foods um, and getting people to eat good food products as opposed to the processed foods, especially mm -hmm. teaching the kids yeah, how to eat at a young age. Yeah. Uh, is is very important. It um, is very important. But the um, the points you were trying to make, um, I think, in between the lines, were that you know there's a lot of temptation out there with a lot of processed foods. It's you said yourself, it's very hard to eat well in this culture. Mm -hmm. um, the advertising on TV, mm -hmm. the social media, mm -hmm. um, it, it's a challenge. It is a huge challenge, yeah. And I'm just going to give you an interesting um, part of my background because I am a natural food chef, but I actually fast um, quite a bit because it's just really good for me. And um, one of the things when you when you fast and you're not eating, you become ultra aware, uber aware. Uh -huh. And in fact, I actually did a 19 day water fast. And oh throughout this goodness. process, and I have not eaten um, fast food, and I'm talking over 20 some years. Um, you know, when I got out of college, I needed to lose a lot of weight. I joined Weight Watchers, I lost 30 pounds. And at that time, I gave up, you know, fast food. And I really never went back. I didn't miss it too much. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm very, uh, and I was driving, I was doing this fast, and I thought about food so much. I thought, oh my God. But I remember driving down, you know, 15501 and thinking, like, I'm going to drive, I'm going to pull in, I'm going to pull in, I'm going to pull in. Uh -huh. So I think that, um, you know, certainly when you're fasting or when you're on a diet or a restriction diet, um, you know, there are so many temptations in our culture mm -hmm. um, everywhere that we go, whether we're wa watching Netflix or, you know, TV, all the advertisements for pizza. And, you know, certainly as a chef, I mean, I work with food all the time. I'm constantly doing sort of recipe development development. And um, it's very difficult to say no. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think a lot of people are like, what should we eat? What should we eat? I think a large part of the problem is we all eat too much regardless, even healthy food. I mean, I certainly mm -hmm. um, eat really well, but I am, uh, you know, I do well eating a lot less. Um, you have a son. I do. How old? He's nine. Nine. Um, how do you coach him? How do you? Because you have to start with the younger they are, the now, better. How, what's the saying? The prophet isn't recognized in their own hometown. He doesn't listen to me. Right. Yeah. No. Right. He's he's a kid who just <laughs> mom's wrong. You and know, I, she'll I will learn tell as you she, as he gets older. Right. Um, I manage the situation, and I, and I will tell you this: I fed him really well, and he had a fan, he has a fantastic palate. Um, you know, when he went to preschool and kindergarten, you know, they're teaching him the alphabet, and they're giving him, you know, M and M's and this, that, and the other thing. And this this kid who had this beautiful palate, you know, and I said to my mother, I said, "Mom, I learned the entire alphabet without, you know, eating." Mm -hmm. candy mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and you know everything has to be fun and fantastic and feel good mm -hmm. and unfortunately um, you know that really steered his palate in a different direction mm -hmm. and my son is very much like other kids um, he loves sweets mm -hmm. and um, so I manage the situation that is to say I take him out for sweets we go out for ice cream I don't buy it and keep it in my house right. we go out for um, uh, Brownies, and I know who makes them homemade in the kitchen because you know, and I know mm -hmm. who doesn't. So I take him to places, and even for myself, when I want a dessert, like if I'm feeling like I want a dessert, um, I'll go out to a restaurant that I know who has the you know the cake homemade or whatever I like. Right. It usually involves chocolate, and I will sit <laughs> and enjoy you know my piece of cake out of the house. So mm -hmm. I don't buy like the Entenmann's, and I don't mm -hmm. go to Fresh Market and always have something sitting around. Mm -hmm. um, so I keep in the house only what I want to eat, and I make it difficult for m myself and my son to get other things. Um, that's a good way. To, uh, so the sweets become something outside the home. Yes. And inside the home, it's more, it try to be more healthy eating. Right. Yeah. And th this idea of a special treat for kids, and I know you had that when you were little and I had that. Um, you know, we had soda on Friday nights. Mm -hmm. That was it. I mean, it wasn't a constant. T tell me about what you were telling me earlier about soda. Um, because it's, it, I read, I mean, it's a killer. Yeah. And, um, 
our culture, you go walk into the grocery store, they have aisles mm-hmm. upon aisles of carbonated beverages so high in corn syrup, right. or sugars. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can calculate yourself if you were to have a soda a day. Right. Do that math for well, me. Well, I had calculated. I stopped drinking soda when I was about 16 because I just felt icky after I drank it. But, you know, still I did drink it. And I, and I did enjoy it, but I just got tired, basically. So I was calculating um, the amount, the equivalent of sugar. So there is the equivalent of nine teaspoons in a 12-ounce can of um, soda. Mm-hmm. And I calculated that amount in pounds over 20 some years because it's been that long since I've I've actually had one a day mm-hmm. and that one product that one item would have been over 800 pounds of sugar um, and then the next thing that I gave up was sugar in my coffee and um, right. and that was about 500 and some pounds just in those two items so had I been eating those that's over 1300 pounds of sugar yeah. over let's say 25 years um, that I haven't eaten because I've given them up and you know I just want to point out to people it isn't fun when you're giving up sugar in your coffee and this whole idea takes 21 days to break a habit that has not been my experience three months solid I woke up and I love coffee and I didn't like it, but I didn't want the sugar. So, you know, changing behaviors and stopping things, you know, our food is as addictive as smoking is. So, you know, I really feel for smokers um, and I think Mm -hmm. they make a decision one day that they don't want to do that and they have to go through those really uncomfortable, it's uncomfortable, right, to stop. And it's uncomfortable for more than 21 days. Uh, Yeah. So all the fad diets, all the... DVDs that are available and the infomercials um, about diet. It's not a magic pill. It, it's all about changing behavior. Mm-hmm. It's not about necessarily, um, it's about altering your diet, but it's not a, a structured diet that is going to guarantee you're going to lose weight and you're going to. Ha- so if you're, you're in a room with uh, 50 people that are overweight mm-hmm. and you ask those 50 people, okay. Can you all tell me, you know, what are the steps to losing weight? Mm-hmm. And then 40 hands go up, and everyone has the right answer. But then how do you get them to action? Right. There's a big transition there, and that's what I think you're talking about. Yeah, and I, I think the key to success is really leveraging and exploiting people's strengths and also, you know, getting them. Some people can do one thing. Some people can do everything. And I think it's important to get people to take a step, and that step could be, you know, another um, th- step that I took in my life was I decided I was going to eat a good breakfast. I went to mm-hmm. Temple University in Philadelphia. And, oh, did you? Yeah. And way before food trucks were popular, I mean, they had a whole entire street of food trucks on uh-huh. both sides. So, you know, I was a student and I'd go and I'd have, a, you know, the, an English muffin slathered with butter, you know, with an egg. And I used to get the Taylor ham and cheese. And, oh, yeah. Um, then I'd get my coffee and I'd put, you know, a ton of cream and, and sugar. And I was, yeah. I, I still remember it. And, and it was food. really good, total comfort food. And, you know, at that point, I was was, you know, getting heavier, and I was like, oh, my God. Um, so anyway, I decided the one thing I'm going to do is start to eat a healthy breakfast. And right. I lost, I think, like eight pounds within a couple of weeks. So I decided, and, but I didn't just do it for two weeks. I decided I'm going to change the way that I eat breakfast. And to this day, I eat a really good mm-hmm. breakfast, and I enjoy it. Um, so... Yeah, I think that that you have to really uh, find out what a person can do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, changes are tough. And I think one of the other things that I I tell people, and I certainly apply it to myself, is make a change and do it for a year. Mm -hmm. So... um, And don't make any value judgments about it for a while. No, you're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days, you're going to go through stressful periods, you know, like Christmas comes and everybody's stressed out at Christmas, or someone might lose a job, or someone might die, or your kid is a teenager and going through all kinds of stuff, you're getting into work. There's a lot of stuff that happens in life, and you need a perspective of time to understand how you behave, right, as it relates to food um, in those periods of time. And then you need to kind of say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to stick with this. And, you know, it does get easier. Um, and we know that, that people who are smokers and do successfully give it up, right? And that's, and that's kind of like our food. It's very addictive, and you make a decision. Um, eating, smoking, um, th- other, a lot of other things. They're actually emotional crutches. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and then having to break that habit and break that behavior, it takes a whole retraining of your thinking mm -hmm. and the associations that you make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Lots of psychologists are in business um, because of the food. Mm -hmm. uh, people use food as a huge crutch. Right. And, and I think at the end of the day, nobody can do it for you. You have to go to that place where it is uncomfortable. Yeah. And it isn't easy at all. And people think, oh, you're a natural food chef, therefore it's easy for you. I'm like, no, it, no, it isn't. I, I like Velveeta, believe it or not. I mean, I, I, you know, in the queso, when they put it in the queso, I like it in the mac and cheese sometimes. And I like homemade mac and cheese. But I have a palate like other people. I grew up on that stuff. Yeah. So um, it isn't easy. I remember growing up as a kid, and every Sunday um, my dad would grill steaks. And he used to jump all over me because I would trim all the fat off the meat. <laughs> and he would say, he would say, what's wrong with you? Eat a little fat's not going to hurt you. <laughs> and I, I didn't know as a kid anything about I just didn't want to It didn't taste good. Right. He goes, Let's, don't cut all the fat off. It was that depression era mentality, mm -hmm. eat what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. And so we had to eat the fat. Um, the world is different today, and the more I see things, uh, I eat less and less meat as I get older. Mm -hmm. And the more I read and the more I see mm -hmm. um, about how animals are raised, and, and if I think if a lot of people saw that, mm -hmm. they would tend to shy away. Mm -hmm. I, I am a little bit. I see that in my own behavior. Mm -hmm. um, as you get older, I guess. And as you get older, in this Moore County, you have a lot of people who are in their 40s to their 70s, mm -hmm. and they are now all of a sudden discovering the benefits of a, of a better diet, not to change the past 40 years, but to at least improve the ones in front of them. Mm -hmm. So there's a, that is playing in a big role as well. I know when I go to a restaurant, um, if I order a salad, I have a rule. If I can't see through the dressing, I don't eat it. I don't know where I got that from. So I have oils and vinegars. I don't do ranch dressings or blue cheese. I just can't. It's too thick. It's too heavy. Where does that come from? My father telling me to eat the fat off the meat when I was a kid? I don't know. <laughs> you were probably raised uh, in a similar way. We're both from the same neck of the woods. Um, culture and, and parents do have a huge influence and kids huge. remember when they get older they do yeah what's interesting my father was very proactive when we were young about his health and us um, huh? and you know he had my mother making these um, bran muffins every morning she'd make them fresh <laughs> he was um, using powdered milk with whole milk and making sort of a two yeah. percent version way back when oh. he was a runner he didn't like sugar he's like if it's good for you then why is everyone telling us to get off of it this was way back when so he had a um a large number of his um family die of heart disease in their 50s um and this is way back my, my dad's like 78 now so you know people who say that in the old days you know people didn't die of this stuff who grew up on eating you know this stuff that's not true I mean, yeah. they died of heart disease and um so yeah, my father was very um, into his health, and I think because he was a high achiever, and I think high achievers often like to feel good. Right. So you'll find that yeah. relationship. One of the things I notice in today's culture, a lot of people juice, mm -hmm. but those juice concoctions that a lot of people make are loaded with sugars. Mm -hmm. Can be, yeah. Either from the fruits or from the, the mixtures that they're putting into it. Um, People are getting their sugars, but it's under the guise of a healthy way of, of, mm -hmm. of eating. You mm -hmm. see that too? Mm -hmm. Just high, high sugar content? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might as well just put a Coke in with your kale and your just mix it all up and get all your sugar. Um, the lessons that your son is learning today, mm -hmm. even though he might not practice them today, yeah. Uh, Kids remember what their parents told them. It kicks in later in life, yeah. and they do tend to mimic what they learned at these form in these formative years. Yeah. So don't don't be discouraged. Yeah, yeah, I think there are a couple of things with kids, you know, and um, I'm unique in this way. I will give him food even when he says, "I don't like it, I don't want it, mommy, I don't want it," and I give it, I put it in front of him, and I'm like, "Just try it." And often when he tries it, 
he'll eat it. And, and an example is that my son is very unique. Like he doesn't, he didn't until recently, until this morning, my mother just said to me, he just ate a ton of grapes. You know, she said, yeah. he, and, and he has never eaten grapes before. I'm like, do you want grapes? No, he's the only kid I know that doesn't eat grapes. He doesn't eat bananas. He doesn't, no, I buy him fruits and vegetables that he loves, but that changes all the time. And one of the things with children, I think, is you have to put food in front of them, even if you it goes to waste. Mm -hmm. But you have to constantly, and I know... You know, I know some someone who gives their kids mac and cheese, mac and cheese, mac and cheese, because that's mm -hmm. all they say that they want. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's one way of dealing with it. I put food in front of my son all the time, mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. that could be new to him, and I ask him to try it. And even foods, like, now he's telling me he doesn't like asparagus. This kid used to <laughs> love asparagus. I mean, I used to roast it and give it to him, and he'd just eat it, you know, with his hands, watching TV, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it changes all the time, and you really have to... Um, um, continue uh, to put foods in front of them at the risk or expense of there being some waste. Right. They'll remember when they get older. Don't worry. <laughs> um, no, they will. Um, so you're a big proponent of the Italian, the Mediterranean, and probably the Asian type diet if people are looking for big picture ideas as to what to eat. You know, um, yeah, I believe people were built to survive. Yeah. I'm unique in that. And so people, at, in a, at a large degree, have to work with what they have available to them. Yeah. So, you know, I don't want to be judgmental, uh, I think, the way a lot of people can be. Um, I, I think that people, and this is another where, place that I'm unique, I don't think there is one diet, and we all eat differently. Right. And, um, you know, I like the Mediterranean diet because I do think it's largely based on whole foods. Right. And, um, you know, so, for example, I did live in Italy for a year and a half, and they were cooking with farro, and I walked, you know, uh, two blocks to a... Um, a dairy. They, they made homemade cheese every single day. Right. Um, you know, the food is fresh, and um, and and so I think that you know when you're looking at food, the less manipulation, the better. When you're looking at ingredients, the fewer, the better. Yeah, Kathy, thanks for coming in and sharing your perspective. Um, it's you know we, we started talking about the farmers market. It's a great thing. People should eat fruits and vegetables and uh, simpler foods and fight the culture wars that are out there. But um, I think you've probably given people a lot of things to rethink about, and that's great. And you're from the north, and you can't help it. We are all judgmental from the north, and we all talk with our hands. And she can't help it either. Have you noticed? The minute we started the set, boom, 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 boom. It's she can't. People from the north can't talk without their, their hands. It, it's just the way we were raised. Um, everybody, have a great week, and we'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Our house in the middle of our